doesn't look very Christmassy. How about this? Nah. Mm, better, but no. You'll just have to use your imagination. But maybe some Christmas music will help. Yeah, we can work with that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lydia and welcome to Chiaro Scuro. So we're doing something a little bit different today. I'm not going to be looking at a painting, but we are going to take a quick look at the history of Santa Claus. Because it's December, and well, that, that's all you need really. So let's talk about Santa Claus. 10 minutes or less. I think most people know that Santa Claus started out as a Christian saint, Saint Nicholas, and he in fact did not live at the North Pole. Actually, I don't think it ever snows in his country. He was the Bishop of Mira, which is now Demre, which is in Turkey, and he lived in the 4th century AD. And even in his own time, he was renowned for his generosity to the poor, especially young girls who were without dowries. Now, when a young girl is without a dowry at that point in time, she usually gets forced into prostitution. So he would give them dowries to help them avoid that fate. Nicholas was the, one of the bishops who presided at the Council of Nicaea, which was the council that discussed the question of whether or not Jesus was fully human he and fully God, which is the doctrine of Homoousius, I believe. And this was in response to the teaching of a fellow named Arius, who proposed that Jesus was just a creation of God. He wasn't God himself, or he was like a demigod thing weirdness. And apparently Arius was being such a dick that Nicholas actually got up and punched him in the face. For causing such a ruckus and being unnecessarily violent, Nicholas was put in jail and temporarily derived of his bishopness. Bishopric? Yeah. Uh, but he was miraculously reinstated, and you can look up the deets on that if you want to know exactly what happened. He was also known for miraculously multiplying wheat during famine and helping guide lost sailors home in a storm. But most of all, he is known for resurrecting three pickled children. Yeah. Now, this is a legend. It appears about 300 years after Nicholas died. Apparently, there was this innkeeper who had murdered his three stepchildren and hidden their bodies in a pickle barrel. Nicholas comes along, feels that something is off, and does a search. He finds the pickled children, but the innkeeper swears his innocence and says that he thought his children had merely run away. Not having a good criminal investigation system back then, the only thing they could do was ask the children. So Nicholas brings them back to life and, they, and the children stand witness against their stepfather and declare that he had murdered and pickled them. And he was put to jail, in jail, put to death. Whatever people did back then for people who were murderers. St. Nicholas is claimed as a patron saint of many different groups, including archers, sailors, children, and pawnbrokers. I'm not sure where the pawnbrokers comes from. Now, it was during the Middle Ages that the British tradition of giving gifts to children in his honor started, but different countries did different things. As early as the 12th century, nuns in France were giving out treats to poor children on St. Nicholas's feast day, which is, again, the 6th of December. And this custom very quickly spread north through Poland, Germany, and the Slavic countries, hence the connection with snow. However, back then, Nicholas only had a donkey that helped him carry his gifts. No reindeer, and definitely no elves. During the Reformation, when Martin Luther declared that it was bad to venerate saints. And he tried to get rid of all sorts of saint feast days and celebrations, including Saint Nicholas. Now you can't just get rid of something like that, that's very special. So he decided to move the tradition of gift giving from the Feast of Saint Nicholas to December 24th and 25th, which is Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And this gift giver figure that Nicholas usually fulfilled was then transformed and uh, Martin Luther suggested the Christkind, or Christkind, Christkind, anyway, it means Christ child. So, you know, Christ child who would come and give gifts on Christmas Day. It ultimately did not work because people still had a great fondness for St. Nicholas and everything that he did. Father Christmas is kind of the typical spirit of good cheer at Christmas who brings peace, joy, goodness, good food, wine, and revelry. And England also kind of rejected the veneration of the saints, so poor old Saint Nick had to go, and gift giving was then moved again to the 25th of December. Uh, then, in the Victorian revival of Christmas, 
They also brought back Father Christmas as the emblem of this emblem of good cheer. He was especially made popular by Charles Dickens, whose ghost of Christmas present was pretty much just Father Christmas. Although John Leach, who made the most beloved illustrations of the Christmas Carol, gave him a spectacularly bare and hairy chest. Uh, like Father Christmas, the ghost of Christmas present goes around sprinkling good cheer and hope everywhere, as well as being an advocate for the less fortunate. In other words, he is a protector of the people. All right, now in Netherlands, we still have Saint Nick, Saint, N Saint Nicholas, but they called him Sinterklaas. For the children in the Netherlands, Sinterklaas remains the predominant gift giver in December. And Sinterklaas actually has a couple of assistants, but they are not, again, not elves. In Holland, it is, he is called Svarte Peter, Svarte Peter, which means Black Peter. Different tasks are often assigned this helper figure, anything from preparing the way for Sinterklaas by amusing children and distributing uh, crude, never mind, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, distributing Sinterklaas themed sweets, cookies, things like that, uh, to those who come to meet the saint as he visits schools and stores and places like that. Alternatively, sometimes his task is to beat the naughty children with switches. In German-speaking parts of Switzerland, they call him Schmutzli. Uh, now, in Germany itself, they have another companion, really going full-out demon on this, called Krampus, who's kind of like a man-goat demon thing. And Krampus can actually kidnap children and take them away, never to be seen again. All of a sudden, coal and stockings doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> This figure originates in a story that St. Nicholas had caught and bound a demon who was tormenting some people, and this demon now has to serve the saint. In the Americas, shortly before the, Revolu the American Revolution, a newspaper reporter in New York wrote a story about Dutch immigrants celebrating the feast of a strange saint who brings them treats. However, the image of Sinterklaas, or Santa Claus, did not really take hold in the public eye until the uh, early 1800s, when they would distribute woodcut prints of him after prayer meetings. In 1821, there was a book that was published, and it had a poem in it called Old Santa Claus with Much Delight, which was an anonymous poem, don't know who wrote it, and it, des and it describes Santa Claus on a reindeer sleigh bringing presents to children. This poem did not become immediately popular. Uh, and it wasn't until another publication uh, in 1823 of a poem called A Visit from St. Nicholas, which is known today as A Night Before Christmas. And in this poem, St. Nick is described as being chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, with a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. And so he has all these round, cheery features, you know, food, cherries, jelly, all that sort of good stuff. Um, but he's also said to be very small, and he rides a miniature sleigh, miniature reindeer, eight reindeer. This is also a poem where reindeer get names. Okay, so that became almost immediately very popular, and it really cemented the idea of Santa Claus as an older elfish type man, immortal obviously, who goes around giving presents. So along these lines, one of the first artists to really define an image of Santa Claus was Thomas Nast, who was a very famous American cartoonist and did a lot of stuff with the Civil War. Um, and in 1863, he created a picture of Santa Claus that appears in Harper's Weekly and it really became the image of Santa Claus and influenced many other images that came afterwards. In the 20th century, uh, images of Santa Claus became even more popular because of the Coca-Cola company. And Coca-Cola used Santa to advertise their product. They really cemented this idea of Santa wearing red and white and they were also the ones who first, who really started to portray him as a big man, right? This kind of giant. They made him very jolly and, well, that's kind of the Santa that we have now. From kick-ass, Middle Eastern saint bishop to a fat man drinking Coca-Cola. 
personally, I kind of like the fierceness of St. Nicholas Santa Claus as a, as a figure of legend. He is supposedly this protector of children. Um, and the movie of The Rise of the Guardians, I think, does a really good job capturing that and how his ferocity does not make him cruel. It actually makes him able to protect the people around him. Similarly, one of my favorite modern illustrators, Ben Hotke, uh, created a picture that he calls Claws the Mighty. I love the wandering gentleman of adventure look. This seems like a man who would give generously and with good cheer and be able to chop the hands off of anyone who tried to abuse or take advantage of people. And somehow, that's very comforting. Well, I hoped you enjoyed this whirlwind tour of the history of Santa Claus. Hey guys, I almost forgot. I know that there are tons of places I missed and so many different traditions or little details that I wasn't able to include. So if you and your family have any special traditions around Santa Claus or even gift giving, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear more. And if you know of what they do in other countries that I didn't mention, or even just more traditions from the countries that I did mention, I would love to hear about that. So leave a comment, send me a message on Instagram, whatever. I'd love to know more. And if I can gather enough stuff, enough information, maybe I can make a follow-up video for next year. So I hope you all have a very merry and blessed Christmas. Bye.